Danger, I'll be doing reactions that produce deadly fumes in this video. I'll be working inside a fume hood to vent the gases away. Doing these reactions inside an enclosed area or without proper ventilation could cause serious injury or death. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. I'm Sri Tips. And in part two of this video, what we'll be doing is uh, we'll be processing the actual filings that came from the jeweler's drawer. Begin part two by uh, roasting the uh, filings in my improvised Black & Decker toaster oven. I'm going to try to get it up over 800 degrees, see if we can burn off all the incineratable material. Now let's get started with that right now. Here I have a small Black & Decker toaster oven that I purchased at the thrift store for $5. I tried to use it as is to burn this material, but it just wouldn't get hot enough. I've got my improvised uh, burnout oven here. It's a Black & Decker toaster oven. And what I had to do to get it to uh, heat up, is I'd pull the casing off the side here and there's a little thermal coupled device here. I don't know if you can see that, but it, uh, when it heats up, it turns the uh, elements off in here. And I uh, opened them up and exposed, I opened this thing here up and expose it to the air and I blow on it when it starts to turn off and it turns them elements back on and I was able to get this thing up to a pretty good temperature and incinerate uh, incinerate those jewelers uh, sweeps just wanted to show you here that the temperature inside there got up over 800 degrees on the uh, sweeps so that should be good enough to burn that out or burn all the stuff off the melt dish there I'm gonna go ahead and pull this out now off. Go ahead and pull this out now. Looks like it did a pretty good job at burning this off. After allowing the dish to cool, I pour it through a wire screen to sift out any large particles from the jeweler's bench sweeps. With all the fine material in the big 4 liter beaker, I take the large particles and add them to a corningware dish and then sweep up anything that got spilled. Next I pour the large pieces into a mortar and pestle and grind it up real good to loosen any small particles. a magnet in a plastic bag and then I run it over the filings to pull out any magnetic material and release it into the white corningware dish. I pour the contents of the mortar and pestle back into the wire screen so that all the fine material goes down into the 4 liter beaker. The bits and pieces of precious metals are transferred from the wire screen into a round corningware dish. I'll set this aside for later processing. I put the magnetic material back into the wire screen to sift off any fine pieces of precious metals. And then I put the uh, magnetic scrap back into the square corningware dish for disposal. the initial uh, screening of the jeweler's uh, drawer sweeps here and what I've done is I've uh, crushed everything up in a mortar and pestle I poured it through this uh, coarse sieve and I ended up with some uh, metal objects that are not precious metals that's iron staplers uh, some staples uh, looks like I got some uh, saw blades and over here I've got a few more pieces of uh, chunks of carrot gold looks like maybe some silver in there and we'll process this separately now what I'll do is I'll go ahead and uh, do the, uh, the fine sifting 
with a fine seed. I transfer the contents of the four liter beaker that was passed through a coarse wire screen into a very fine wire screen to uh, recover any large bits for further processing. I dump the junk iron material into a beaker and then I transfer the precious metals into my white corningware dish. I put a magnet inside of a plastic bag and run that magnet through those filings again to withdraw any magnetic material that I can. I release the magnetic material into the beaker with the other iron scrap and then I add the uh, precious metals particles to the mortar and pestle again and grind them again trying to get all the uh, loose fine precious metals away from the larger pieces. the material from the fine wire screen to the material that was sifted from the coarse wire screen together. I search through the large pieces and pick out any stones so I can give them back to the jeweler. There's some tiny pieces of uh carat gold that I didn't get on the first pass but most of it is little square sections of uh, silver and gold solder quite a bit of it I'm gonna go ahead and put this in a melt dish melt it into a button and then I'll encord it with the uh, silver Here's a little button of precious metals. It's probably going to contain some gold, probably mostly silver, and a little bit of maybe some platinum group metals. We'll come back to this right now. What I want to do is get focused on the uh, filings that we took from the jeweler's tool drawer and go ahead and get started with these. Now we're going to extract the uh, silver and palladium, if any, out of these uh, jeweler sweeps with nitric acid. So I'm going to add about 250 ml of uh, distilled water. It's important to use distilled water here because tap water has chlorine in it. You'll know, develop uh, some silver chloride in there and it'll make uh, some filtering hard later on. Now I'm going to add some nitric acid, maybe about 50 ml or so. I'm going to turn the heat to about medium here. Go ahead and set this on the heat. As you can see, the reaction's already started. I'm already starting to get some fumes in there. Solution's heated up now to almost boiling. It's been on the uh, heat for about an hour and a half now, and I don't see any more fumes in there, or very light fumes. So what I'm going to do is add about 20 more ml of uh, concentrated nitric acid and see what kind of reaction we get. Let's see if we need to proceed with more acid uh, extractions here. Add the acid real slow. Little 
to no reaction. I'm going to do a couple of tests now. Here I've got some uh, water in a test tube. I'm going to add a few drops of uh, hydrochloric acid to it to acidify the water. I'm going to get a drop or so out of here. And I'm going to add it to the test tube. And if we've got any silver in there, it should turn to silver chloride as soon as we push it. Put it into the uh, tube here and see what happens. There you see it. That's confirmation of uh, silver chloride. Now I'll do a stannous chloride test, see if we got any other metals in solution, see if we can get an indication of what's going on in here. I don't see much of a reaction there, maybe a little bit of yellowish color. Might be a little bit of uh, platinum in there. The jeweler sweep's been uh, simmering all day long in a dilute nitric acid bath. I'll go ahead and take it off the heat right now. And I'm going to add a little bit of distilled water here. We'll let it cool down, see if we can uh, get a filtering on it. I tilted the beaker to one side there so you can see the material down in the bottom. Looks like there's going to be some, uh, quite a few gold filings in that. Pretty good rich material here. I can see some gray colored stuff in there with it. That's probably the abrasive that comes off the discs that the jeweler uses. Maybe we'll, we'll know here in a little bit after I get this uh, solution off of these uh, particles here. We'll go ahead and treat this with aqua region. Well, I'm waiting for that uh, solution to cool down so I can filter it. Go ahead and get started working on this button. I've got some test acid on here, some 14K test acid, but I, this stuff is probably less than 14K. I'm gonna go ahead and weigh it now, this button that we did. And I got 9.7 grams, 9.7 grams. It's saying 14, but I'm gonna call it 10K. Okay, I'm going to calculate how much silver I need to uh, encourt this button. It's 9.7 grams of 10K, which is 0.417. 9.7 times 0.417 equals. So we've got 4 grams, 4.04 grams of pure gold in this button. Now we multiply that by 3. and we get 12.13 so we'll have 4 grams, 4.04 grams of gold and 12.13 grams of silver in there 25 percent gold 75 percent silver but we've already got some non-gold metal in our button here to find out how much it is we subtract 4.0 from the 9.7 and we come up with 5.7 grams of non-gold in this button. So we got to subtract that from the 12.13 and we come up with 5.17 5.7 equals we come up with 6.43 grams of silver. That's how much we need to encourt this gold button. But I'm going to multiply this by 0.9. I'm going to bring it down times 0.9 equals 5.79 grams. The reason I do that, I don't want to put too much silver in there. Too much silver will cause that button to fall apart in the dilute nitric acid, and we want to avoid that. Okay, I've got 5.7 grams of sterling silver here. I'm going to go ahead and add our button to the melt dish. Put our 5.7 grams of silver in here, and we're going to take it out here and melt it.
Now I'm going to dump the tap water out. Put the gold in a 600 ml beaker here. Rinse it out with some distilled water. Then I'm going to rinse the gold with a few distilled water rinses to get any chlorinated tap water off of there. Be careful not to pour any of the gold out. That should do it. Now we'll add some dilute nitric acid to this and go ahead and uh, remove the silver and other base metals. Here I'll add some uh, dilute nitric acid from some previous reactions to the gold, about a hundred ml or so. Put a cover on it. Turn the heat up on the medium. And put it on the heat. Okay, I folded a filter paper here. Put it in, moisten it, and start. We have to start uh, filtering our solution here. There's our filings uh, down at the bottom of the beaker. There, we're going to try to get this into the filter paper. And we got to rinse all the uh, silver out of it so when we put aqua regia in, we don't form a bunch of silver chloride. So I'm going to try to rinse this down into the filter now. Notice the green color of the liquid going through the filter paper. dump this uh, nitric off here it's probably loaded with silver add some fresh nitric so my gold started to crumble there a little bit it's starting to go to powder I want to try to avoid that because then we lose some of it Or, uh, fresh nitric dilute nitric this has been used before but it still dissolves uh, silver real good so I'm going to add some more and let this cook for a little longer I've ran a half a liter of distilled water through the funnel here to try to rinse the silver chloride out of these filings that are down in the funnel and to see if uh, I got it all out what I'm going to do is I'm going to collect a few drops of this uh, water coming out of the funnel into a test tube here and then once I get it uh, uh, collected, what I'll do is add some hydrochloric acid. If there's silver chloride still present in that uh, water, uh, the hydrochloric acid will uh, reveal it. And then I'll know that I've got some more rinsing to do before I can go to aqua regia with this, uh, with this, with the filing. So I'm going to go ahead and add some hydrochloric acid here and we'll see what, the, what kind of reaction we get. And I don't see a whole lot. If there was some silver in there, I would have got a cloudy uh, mixture. And that looks pretty clear, so I'm going to I'm going to conclude that the filings in this funnel have been rinsed free of silver chloride. It's all right to go ahead and put these in some aqua regia and start dissolving out the precious metals. Here we have the uh, encoded button that's been uh, sitting in dilute nitric acid now overnight. Hot dilute nitric acid. And I believe I've got just about all the uh, silver out of the uh, bits of gold that I can. So I'm going to take that off the heat, set it over here so it can cool. Now I'm going to transfer the filter here with the uh, sweeps in it, or the uh, filings filter paper and all into the same beaker that we uh, took them out of 
if I can get them out of there without that filter ripping. There it goes. Put it right in the filter, just like that. Now I'll add some hydrochloric acid to the uh, filter and the filings. The fil filter paper in there will just go ahead and it'll just dis disintegrate. That's about 200 ml of uh, hydrochloric acid. Now I'll set the beaker with the uh, filter and the filings in it up here on the heat. Next I'm going to add some nitric acid here to the mixture on the heat. That's uh, about 3 ml right there. And another 3 ml. That's 6. There's 9. 12 ml of concentrated nitric acid. And immediately you can see a pretty good reaction. Started. I just stirred this up a little bit by swirling it. Just wanted to show you there's a pretty good reaction going on in there now. Now I'm going to show how to get the silver out of the uh, solution that we filtered off here. I've got a coil of uh, clean copper wire suspended inside of a 2 liter beaker. I pour the solution in with the copper wire and what will happen here is the uh, silver will cement out onto that copper wire. And the way that it was explained to me, the uh the reason we call it cement silver is because the uh, pure silver powder that uh, comes out onto the uh, copper there resembles wet cement. Now there's a test we can do to see if there's any palladium in here. We draw a little bit of the solution up, put it into a test tube here, and then I've got some DMG. Now DMG does not dissolve very well in water, but it will dissolve in hot water. So I'm going to put a few drops of this. Uh, DMG that's been dissolved in uh, some distilled water to see if we can get any kind of reaction here. What we're looking for is a yellowish color. DMG when it comes in contact with palladium forms a uh, bright canary yellow precipitate. It might take a few minutes so we'll just keep our eye on this thing. Our silver's coming out. Shake it loose off there. See it falling to the bottom, it's got a gray color to it. That's why it's called cement silver because the silver powder looks like wet cement. Our DMG test for palladium over here, I can't tell a whole bunch of color change there, so it's probably just a very slight trace amount of palladium. Here's our cement silver been on here a couple hours now. I'm going to shake it off. And you can see as soon as I shake it off, the uh, pink copper wire disappears and a little bit more uh, stuff starts cementing out on it. So it'll be a while before it's all out of there. It's a good idea to stir this up. Here's our sample that we took out of the green liquid here. I put a little bit of DMG in there, really get, it's got just a slight bit of a yellow tint to it. What I'm going to do here, I've got some uh, palladium standard test solution, 100 grams or 100 milligrams per 100 ml, and I'm going to pour a few drops in here and see if I can get the uh, precipitate to form. Show you what that looks like. There it goes. another 3 ml shot of nitric acid to our uh, jeweler's files over here. Nice reaction there. ml of fresh hydrochloric acid in here. 
Uh, excess hydrochloric acid in this reaction is not a problem. Excess nitric acid is what you want to avoid. I'm going to add another 3 ml shot of nitric to the uh, to the uh, filings here. It's been on there about an hour and a half. I had to leave here, but uh, and it's still reacting pretty good. So there's stuff in there still dissolving. The jeweler sweeps have been on here now for several hours. Probably at least a good four, maybe five hours. I'm going to add another shot of nitric acid, about 3 ml here. And we get very little reaction there. Very little reaction. And hardly any fumes. So I think we've got everything uh, that's going to go into solution. We've got it in solution. While I'm waiting for the uh, filings to uh, go into solution over here, I'll go ahead and pour this, uh, the encorded silver, or the encorded gold into a filter paper here and try to filter that gold out. And this is a perfect example of why we don't want the uh, the uh, imported gold going into a powder or them chunks falling apart. If you look down here in the filtrate, I've got some uh, real fine particles of gold that came through the filter. I'm going to transfer the filter out of this uh, out of this beaker here over to this little flask, and I'm going to keep rinsing here until I get all the silver rinsed out of this. reason I'm rinsing this is because uh, we're going to be putting this in some aqua regia. Aqua regia has hydrochloric acid. If there's any silver in here, then the silver will react with that hydrochloric acid, form silver chloride, and gum up the works when we go to try to do some filtering later on. So I want all the silver out of that gold. But this is a silver nitrate solution, but it has some very, very fine suspension of gold in it probably less than a half of a tenth of a gram, just a, just a tiny bit, but it goes right through a filter paper. That's how fine it is. I'm just going to add this to my silver jar, and I'll recover that later. in the filter and I'm going to try to rinse all the silver out of it so we don't form silver chloride. That rinse water will go into my uh, silver jar here. As soon as all this uh, water drains through the filter, I'll swap the funnel over to this other flask and then pour this rinse water into my silver jar. And we'll keep rinsing and then we'll do the test to see if we got all the silver rinsed out of the gold there. Okay, the water stopped flowing now. I'll go ahead and swap the funnels. This goes in my silver jar because it might have just a touch of silver in it. This is the same test tube that I used previously to test wash water for silver content. It's got a little bit of wash water in it with some uh, hydrochloric acid already in it. I'm gonna take this and I'm going to use my funnel here and I'm going to drop some, uh, some of the sample coming through the funnel into this test tube to see if we got silver chloride forming. It's got hydrochloric acid already in it. This will tell me if I've got silver chloride, or I mean uh, silver nitrate that still needs to be rinsed out of that, uh, that funnel. And apparently it looks crystal clear. 
I'm gonna add a few more drops of hydrochloric just to make sure. And I don't see anything forming in that rinse water. So it's safe to conclude that all the silver nitrate's been rinsed out of this gold now. All the silver nitrate has been rinsed free out of the gold now. What I'm gonna do is this beaker's been rinsed out with distilled water several times. It's the beaker that the gold came out of with the silver nitrate solution, but it's been rinsed out. I'm gonna take the, uh, I'm gonna take the filter and the gold, and we'll put it right back in this beaker, the whole thing. I'm gonna dump our rinse water into my silver jar. It might have a little bit of silver in it. Now I'll add some hydrochloric acid to the filter and the gold. Oh, about 50, 75 ml or so. I'll put the cover on. I'm gonna set this aside, turn my attention back over here to the, uh, to the uh, filings that are in the two liter beaker here. I've turned the heat up here on the uh, filings. It's on medium, I'm gonna add about uh, one ml, one and a half ml of nitric here and just see what kind of reaction we get. that last uh, nitric addition the uh, filings look like they pretty much uh, calmed down with their reaction now I'm gonna go ahead and pull this off the heat and allow this to cool and we'll go ahead and put our piece of imported gold on the heat start dissolving that I'm gonna go ahead and add a shot or two of nitric acid into this start off with uh, 3 ml Shouldn't take much. That might do it right there. on the heat now on aqua region for about 20 minutes i'll lift the beaker up here and see if we can see how much gold we got dissolved yet there's still a few pieces so i add just a touch more nitric gas and try to get everything to go in solution i'm gonna add about uh about a half ml of nitric acid here Just added another half ml of nitric. Uh, there's still some solids in the bottom of the beaker, and it's uh, reacting nicely there. I'm gonna go ahead and let this uh, sit on the heat for a little while, see if I can get all that solid material to go in solution. Just make sure that the reaction had stalled. I'm gonna add a little bit of hydrochloric acid here. I'm gonna add a little bit more nitric acid here, maybe about a half ml. See if we can get all that gold to go in solution. getting late so I'm gonna go ahead and knock off for the day. I'm just gonna do a quick review with you what we've done so far. Here I've got the uh, actual filings dissolved in aqua regia. Over here I've got the uh, cement silver. I'm covering the silver out of the uh, uh, nitric extractions. Over here I've got the encorded gold being dissolved removed all the silver from it. I've got it being dissolved. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to shut everything off and uh, start it all back up tomorrow. And so uh, y'all have a good night and we'll see you tomorrow. And welcome back. It is tomorrow morning. This has been on low heat all night long. And as you can see, everything has gone into solution. 
Now what I'm going to do is go ahead and add a little bit of uh, concentrated sulfuric acid here to uh, precipitate out any lead that we might have in our solution. I'll pull this dissolved gold off the heat. We'll add a couple ice cubes here to cool it down so we can filter it. The solution has been chilled down now to about the uh, temperature of a cold glass of iced tea. I'm going to turn the vacuum pump on. I've got a uh, moist filter paper in here. I'm going to go ahead and start filtering the uh, gold now. The filtering operation is complete here. I've got a bunch of gray material in the filter there. We'll go ahead and precipitate this now with some SMB. Transfer the solution to a clean beaker. I'm going to use uh, some uh, product called Stump Out. It's by Bonide. You have to get the Stump Out by Bonide. This is sodium metabisulfite and it will work to precipitate gold. The Spectricide version is not sodium metabisulfite. It is nit potassium nitrate and it will not precipitate your gold. So we're going to go ahead and add some SMB now. Stump Out. Precipitate the gold. seen that before. Got some neat little layers forming here. I'll go ahead and stir this up. Swirl it. Now while I'm waiting for this gold to settle, I'm going to get set up to uh, start filtering the uh, solution off the jeweler's filings here that we extracted with aqua region. I've got a filter rigged up here. I'm going to go ahead and filter the gold solution off the uh, jeweler's filings now. Most of that material is probably the, uh, the abrasive that the uh, jeweler uses. Here's what's left in the filter. It looks like it's mostly uh, abrasive material. We're rinsing out real good. Get all the gold bearing solution out of there. And then what I'll do is I'll put this back in the beaker and we'll try to extract just a little bit more out of it, see if anything else will come out. That jeweler had taken uh, anything that had soft solder in it talking about lead and tin. It just takes a little bit of tin. If tin gets dissolved in that nitric acid, it forms a metastatic acid or tin paste and it will gum that filter right up and slow everything way down. So you can tell this jeweler has not had any soft solder in his uh, filings and that's a good thing for us. Everything's been filtered now. I'm going to go ahead and take this uh, filter out. I'm going to add the uh, solution to this one liter beaker here. There's probably going to be some excess nitric acid in here. So I'll probably be adding some uh, some sulfamic acid to kill any excess nitric that I have. I'm going to start this out by adding just a touch of sulfamic acid here see if there's a whole bunch of excess nitric. If there is, I'll get a big foamy reaction here. And I got nothing. Now I'll be adding some stump out by Bonide. You got to get the stuff by Bonide. The other stuff doesn't work. This is sodium metabisulfite or SMB. I'm going to go ahead and add some to the uh, solution now and precipitate out the gold out of that green solution. I'm going to add one more 
spoon here. Half a spoon. I've got the gold dropped out of the green solution here. I don't like to see it. it's about it's a goodly amount in there. I'm gonna set it back here out of the way. I'm gonna take and bring this beaker back up forward. And I'm going to transfer the uh, stuff in the filter here to this beaker and do another aqua regia extraction on it. I'm going to add about 100 ml uh, hydrochloric acid here to the, uh, the residue from the filter. Pour in a few ml of uh, concentrated nitric acid form some aqua regia, maybe about 20 ml or so. Just swirl it up here, mix it, and put it on the heat, medium heat. Let it boil for a while. I can't be sure, but it's looking like there might be a little bit more precious metals uh, coming out of, out of uh, that batch there since I added the fresh aqua regia. Been on there about uh, 10 minutes now. Let this cook a little while and uh, do a status test. See if we got anything in solution. I'll go ahead and get a status test on this uh, stuff I got boiling in this beaker here. See if we got anything else going into solution. Look at that. That is a bright orange for platinum. Probably not a whole lot, but I mean, uh, that's what we're going to get out of there now. Some platinum looks like. Now I'm going to get a status test on the encorded button here. Make sure all that gold is dropped. And as you can see, there's nothing in solution there. Now I'll get a status test of the uh, filings extraction material here. Guess we'll probably have some. Uh, I'd have some platinum in solution here. Yeah, and I get an orange color on that as well. Just a trace amount. We'll just add that to the stockpile. I pour off the waste from the encorded button to my stock pot. Next, I rinse the gold out of the beaker into a filter paper. I put the gold, filter paper and all, into a melt dish and melt it up into a button. Here's our button that we just melted. This came out of the encorded uh, pieces that we got from this uh, part two of the jeweler sweeps video. I'm going to go ahead and put it on scale here. See what kind of weight we got on it. Four grams, 4.0 grams. And our yield was uh, four grams. And that's just about exactly what we calculated here, 4.04. My stock pot's full, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to pour this waste, which contains a little bit of platinum, into this uh, flask here. And then I'll add that to the stock pot once I uh, empty it out. And here's our pure gold. the gold powder with a little hydrochloric acid here. I don't know if you can see that, but the hydrochloric acid rinse is uh, get some yellowish colored li liquid out of the uh, gold powder. That's why we do this uh, hydrochloric acid rinse. Now I'll put this gold into a melt dish and melt it up into a button. I would normally at this point, since it had some platinum in there with it, 
I would normally go ahead and refine this a second time, but in uh, the interest of keeping this uh, video, it's already long enough, in the interest of keeping this video at a decent length, I'm going to go ahead and melt this into a button so we can get a total yield. I'm going to take the filtered gold now and put it in a melt dish down here and go ahead and melt it up into a button so we can get a final yield on this. Here's the button that I just melted. Go ahead and put it on the scale here and get a final weight. Looks like 16.8 grams of pure gold. Only one thing left to do here, get the silver into a filter paper. This is what the silver looks like. It's gray in color, looks like wet cement. That's why they call it cement silver. Here I've got the silver. I'm gonna go ahead and put it in a melt dish and. Start melting it. Here's our button of silver. We just melted this up in the uh, melt dish out there. It's not a uh, high purity. It's about 99% pure. We got 6.3 grams, 6.3 grams of silver. This is the silver waste, and I'll add that to a separate container. I do not put that in my stock pot. I put that in a separate container and put the copper in it to cement out any remaining silver that possibly might be in there. Over here, I have the uh, filings. It's got a little bit of platinum solution on top of them. Not enough to try to refine. And what I'll do is I'll filter that out and rinse the uh, filings of the material that's left in there off real good and I'll add that to my stock pot. This is the waste from the filings where I did the uh, aqua regia extraction. It's got a little bit of platinum in it. I'll add that to my stock pot as well as soon as I get that stock pot emptied out. Okay, we've completed the jeweler sweeps. Just wanted to uh, show you exactly what we got here. We got the 16.8 gram button from the filings. We've got the 9 gram button that came from, I uh, can't remember where that came from right now, and then there's a 4 gram button. This is everything that came out of all the jeweler's waste, including the silver button. So that concludes our video on the jeweler's polishing sweeps. Thanks for watching.